How many times have you made insanely ambitious plans with flaming motivation and a will of steel just to not stick to any of them? You do that over and over, leaving you in a loop of frustration. I've been reading tons of books and dissecting the dynamics of consistency from the top researchers in the field until I finally understood the formula of consistency. This formula is what allowed me to read over 100 books, consistently study for up to 12 hours a day throughout medical school, build a solid training routine, and even create this very channel with consistent uploads. And the reason this framework is so powerful is that it's neuroscience-based and works in synchrony with human psychology to make consistency effortless. Starting with the first aspect, which is a hidden psychology trap that 90% of people fall into. You see, every time you set a big goal, your brain floods you with dopamine and motivation, making you feel unstoppable. The problem, however, is that this is temporary brain chemistry. Within days or weeks, those brain chemicals crash, leaving you with nothing but willpower to push through. And willpower, as we know, is a muscle that gets exhausted, making failure simply a matter of time. This is called a motivation decay cycle, and you're destined to stay stuck in it as long as you rely on motivation alone. You see, motivation is temporary, unstable, and requires energy to muster. So it's unreliable for sustaining anything. A popular research article in Psychological and Cognitive Sciences states that substantial fluctuations in motivation are at the core of human nature. True consistency, however, doesn't run in motivation. It runs in something psychologists call automaticity, actions that become so ingrained they require almost zero mental energy to execute. Like brushing your teeth. You don't need motivation for that, do you? When you build consistency through fostering automaticity instead of motivation, you create effortless momentum, which is progress that sustains itself on autopilot. I'll show you exactly how to avoid this motivation decay cycle and switch your working state from motivation dependent to consistency fuel. The reason you can stay consistent with anything is because you're developing it as a new endeavor and not a habit. Your brain hates the resistance of novel activities, but loves habits. They're repetitive and simple, which is what makes consistency doing them easy. And the single best way to develop a new habit consistently is to utilize what's known as the identity habit loop. You see, when you adopt the identity of someone who does something, you're more likely to stick to actually doing it, as said by James Clear. But that's easier said than done. Simply saying I'm Batman doesn't actually make you Batman. I Batman. I live in the shadows. Judges. I present to you the golden neuroscience hack that makes developing this identity habit loop effortless and almost magical. Deliberate minimalism. Essentially, it's doing the absolute minimum of something on purpose. Want to study for hours? Study for a few minutes first. Want to be more productive than Elon Musk? You have to be more productive than a rock first. Want to work out five times a week? You have to work out once a week first. In the short term, this might seem useless, but in the long term, doing even the absolute minimum of something consistently does absolute wonders. That's because over time, it subconsciously implants the new identity in your brain. And as we said, having the identity of someone who does something makes it easier to do as a habit. This in turn makes consistently effortless, which in turn makes the habit even easier, and so on and so forth. Obviously, you won't fix say it on the absolute minimum. With enough time, you'll be able to increase your threshold, like maintaining consistency of working out six times a week or studying for hours a day nonstop. But that's after you've sufficiently established the identity habit loop. So it needs patience. This alone will do wonders for you. But we have to address an even bigger problem that not only sabotages most people's progress, but makes the experience of trying to be consistent feel like hell. You see, when you make plans for the future, you often do so selfishly. I've touched on that deeply with the science in my previous video. Simply put, you plan to feel good about making ambitious plans in the moment because it feels good to fantasize about future success. You naturally don't make plans for your future self to actually act upon, but to please the ego of your current self. This over-optimism is what causes you to have a twisted, perfectionist perception of consistency, which ironically sabotages your progress. That's because failure to deliver on these unrealistic ambitions is translated by your brain as inadequacy, putting you in a state of guilt and incompetence, eventually railing you off track, as shown by a 2008 study. Such a sequence causes over two times higher risk of burnout, chronic self-blame, and 68% dropout rates in long-term projects. However, when you set modest goals and manage to deliver on them, you activate the neurochemical feels-good pathway, increasing motivation, persistence, and future task engagement, also shown by a different study. In short, perfectionism and overambitious ego-driven goals are a recipe for failure. This includes setting multiple goals at once as well. Bro, you're not the main character. You won't transform in a five-minute training montage with funk music in the background. Here's exactly how to avoid all of this toxic spiral. Redefine consistency from perfection to simply showing up, even if you do terribly. One thing at a time, one step at a time. If you miss a day or two, or even a week or two, it's never a failure unless you make it so. Don't even bother if you can't swallow your ego and accept that at least at the beginning you'll be flawed or just outright terrible. An example of such a terrible, overambitious projection would be planning to read 50 books a year when you haven't even read 
five in the past 20 years. And on top of that, feeling dissatisfied when you can't read your daily pages, which will naturally lead to dropping the goal altogether. A good example, however, would be planning to read 20 books a year. Not fantastic, but not bad at all either. And when you do miss reading days or even weeks, you simply get back on track. Additionally, you constantly appreciate your progress, even if you manage to read only 15 books by the end of the year. But if you want to go even further and have consistency of still you almost feel superhuman, that's where the third step comes in. You see, most people who are inconsistent just don't understand what consistency is. They're working on aspects that don't actually help with maintaining consistency. An example would be trying to muster and maintain motivation as we discussed. What they don't understand is that consistency is usually the manifestation of three other aspects. If you get these aspects in check, consistency will simply be an automatic side effect. In fact, your brain loves consistency. It loves familiarity and routine. You just have to adjust these aspects for it to be in that state. These key aspects are environment, friction, and reward. Here's exactly how to adjust these areas to foster maximum consistency. For environment, you want to remove anything that makes the habit harder and plant cues everywhere that prompt you to do it. For example, if you want to get in shape and work out, put your running shoes by the door and have a couple of comfortable, practical training clothes ready in the wardrobe or somewhere around your room. If you want to read, leave your book or reading tablet by the bed and habitually charge your phone far away from your bed so you actually get to read instead of doom scroll. As for friction, you want the activity itself to be as smooth and practical as possible. The principle of absolute minimums we just discussed partially addresses that since it breaks down massive tasks that your brain perceives as monsters and procrastinates on to doable chunks. In addition, if you want to be consistent going to the gym, for example, don't go to a faraway gym or ignore having comfy gym clothes. Don't do tiring, complicated exercises. Have advanced five days a week routines etc. The simpler, less frictional habits will always stick and make consistency a piece of cake. And eventually, you'll be able to easily ramp them up. As for reward, we're not talking about a chocolate bar after doing the habit. The most important type of reward is the psychological one. You have to actively applaud yourself for being consistent, even if minimally. A 2002 study has shown that internal acknowledgement of achievement activates the dopaminergic reward system, further reinforcing the behavior. The more you systematically optimize these aspects, the more consistency becomes second nature. This is also known as creating systems instead of using willpower. Finally, as a reward for making it till the end of the video, here's one final tip to help you maintain consistency right away in the immediate short term. Make a pre-commitment. Make going back on your word harder. An example is telling your best friend to hold you accountable for the next three days or paying them a good sum of money and not having it back unless you do what you say you will. You can tell a whole group of friends instead. Likewise, if you join my Discord from the link in the description, you can join a mini group in which you all hold each other accountable for the next week constantly checking up on each other and keeping yourselves on track. It's totally free and is very beneficial in the short term. You're more than welcome there. Also, if you want to know how to schedule your days productively using a neuroscience-based approach and actually stick to them, make sure to check out my previous video by clicking here. That was it, and I'll see you in my next video.